Strong trade was maintained throughout Book 3 of the Tattersall's October yearling sales, which concluded on Friday with four individual lots making 130,000 guineas to top the sale. The first lot to see the hammer come down at 130,000 guineas was lot 1367, a filly by exciting first season sire Memas from the family of Invincible Army, who sold to Tom Goff of Blandford Bloodstock, leaving them the leading purchasers at the two-day sale with a total of 13 yearlings acquired for 449,000 guineas. The filly was bought for just 11,000 guineas as a foal by Kitty Fitzgerald of consigners Lockmore Stables in partnership with Luke Barry of Manster House and saw a handsome return on investment. She was a lovely filly. She had size, scope and action, great attitude. Just a filly we've liked a lot all year. And then Maymas just really excelled and it just, you know, it started getting a bit exciting. So, yeah, she had a bit of pedigree as well. Ticked a lot of boxes, um, fed it well, the right people were on her. Lovely, lovely filly. Another notable pinhook was landed by lot 1428, a Hazelwood bloodstock consigned cult by Knight of Thunder, who, having been bought by pinhooker Troy Steve for 20,000 guineas, was sold for the sale topping equaling price to Grove Stud. The successful purchaser has plans to breeze the horse next year, sourced from an operation fronted by Adrian O'Brien. He's just improved and improved physically himself, and obviously. The stallion has done an amazing job this year and, and, and it, it's really all down to the stallion today, I think. He's quite a tall, leggy, scopey horse. He walks very well. He's not perfect in front, but neither is Knight of Thunder himself. And, um, but they, they all seem to be able to run. Just a few lots later on day one, a son of Far also equalled the top price of 130,000 guineas when knocked down to Matt Coleman of Stroud Coleman Bloodstock with a view to race in France. The first foal out of Fair Daughter hails from the family of Group One winners Crowded House, Ticket Tape, Reckless Abandon and Brando and was consigned by Carr Colston Hall. Lovely foal and he just he just developed into a real imposing horse. Good looking colt, walked really well and we were delighted with the with the with the price he, he made yesterday. I think he goes to France um, to Andre Farb, so he'll have he'll have every chance and the mare's back and fall to Far as well, so hopefully it all works out. Lot 1564, a daughter of Churchill, also became the joint highest price filly to sell during Book 3, when knocked down to Joe Foley on behalf of Clipper Logistics for the sales topping price. Bred by Max Irvine out of his orientate mare Purple Glow, the family held particular appeal to the successful purchaser, who had signed for the half-sister listed winner Main Desire for €40,000 at the Tattersall's Island September sale in 2016. The filly also counts on a strong US-based representation in the family, including Grade 1 winner Easy Goer, and was sold by agent Keith Hart. As an individual, um, she resembles her mother in a lot of ways. She's got a very wide, strong, big back end, good shoulder, good walk, um, wants to get on with things which Main Desire was very like as well. Um, kind filly, but wants to get on with things and wants, wants to race, basically. The highest price yearling to sell during the second session was lot 1923, an authorised colt from the Castlebridge consignment, which saw agent Alex Elliott get the better of underbidder Jed O'Keefe to secure the offering for 90,000 guineas. The half-brother to listed winner Centasia is also nominated for French premiums and attracted the interest of Mark Johnson, Rabba Bloodstock and Highflyer before being secured by the successful purchaser. I love book three because you can really trawl through it and find a few sleepers and when I saw the pedigree he's an authorised who they're not making anymore because he's in Turkey. He's had a wonderful results jumping and I actually bought a grade three winning chaser by him this week. So when I saw his pedigree in the catalogue I thought he was, uh, he, he better go and be seen. He's a, he's a brother to a 106 rated filly. Um, it's a good staying German family deeper down. Well, when I saw the physical, I was I was blown away by him, and uh, he's going to go back to Ireland. And um, there's a lot of options for him. We can run him on the flat next year, or we can uh, keep him and go the national hunt route with him. Uh, but uh, yeah, we were delighted. At the conclusion of an extraordinary couple of weeks at Tattersalls that has largely bucked the economic trends, marketing director Jimmy George gave his assessment of the 2020 Tattersalls October yearling sales. I think uh, the overriding sentiment at the end of the 2020 Tattersalls October yearling sale is one of enormous gratitude 
Gratitude to every single person that has participated in the October yearling sales in whatever capacity over the last couple of weeks. They've had to overcome a huge number of, uh, of challenges uh, to, to get this far and uh, everybody has cooperated fully from start to finish to help us stage these sales as successfully as we have and uh, an enormous tribute must be paid to absolutely every single person, consigners, purchasers, vets, grooms, everybody from start to finish, they've been absolutely fantastic and showed enormous resolve to, to make these sales run as smoothly as possible. To date, we've staged 11 sales at Tattersall since the last week of June. All of them have been fully compliant with all the prevailing rules and regulations. We've endeavoured to make sure that everybody has conducted their business in as safe an environment as possible. And uh, it's a fantastic tribute to everybody that we've got to this stage and that the market has remained as resilient as it has. I think that's not just a tribute to everybody that's been here at Tattersall's over the past two weeks but also to the town of Newmarket itself. Newmarket really is the hub of European racing and breeding. And no town, arguably in the world, has an infrastructure more suited to, to conducting this business. We have everything in the town of Newmarket to help us stage sales, and never more has that been important than under the current circumstances, with everything that the COVID pandemic has thrown at us. We're also, I think, the, the, the success of the October yearling sales reflects the, the, the innate optimism and enthusiasm of racehorse owners from throughout the world. And racing is a sport that has managed to carry on, albeit behind closed doors, but people have been racing horses in the UK since the beginning of June. Yes, it's been very different, but people still have a lot to look forward to. The innate optimism and enthusiasm of racehorse owners has also been crucial to the strength of the market throughout the October yearling sales in every sector of the market. As ever, there have been some wonderful individual triumphs to come out of the Tattersall's October yearling sale, pin hooking successes and uh, individual highlights such as the, the world's highest price yearling filly in the world this year and uh, three of the 10 highest price yearlings ever sold in book one of the October yearling sale. Equally, the clearance rate throughout the October yearling sale from books one to four has actually improved on last year, which is a remarkable tribute to the sustained demand we've seen over the last two weeks. But all in all, really, this is a message of gratitude, a gratitude to every single person who has helped stage these sales over the last two weeks.